What is going on guys? Sean Don coming back with a technical analysis. Here we have Brandon Anderton, sophomore at BYU, throwing the hammer. Video was sent in by his father. So props to uh, Brandon's father, Aaron, for helping his son out. Love to see it. Love to see that involvement in sport. Um, so yeah, let's just get right into it. Let's take a look. Nice yell. One more time. Three heels. Okay, so let's break it down. Um, lines is pretty standard, nothing crazy. You're not doing anything wild. Um, pretty balanced. One thing that I do notice is let's see if my computer can keep up with my keystrokes. Um, the shoulders just look a little bit unstable in the wines. So as you can see, you're leaning back a good bit here, and then they come forward a good bit here, and then they shift around a little bit, hip shift back a little bit, and then they come back again, and then come down and forwards again. Um, Generally in the wines, I think you want to try to create stability. So stability in the body while the hammer is moving around you. Um, if there's too much movement in the shoulders and, and mid back and low back and hips and stuff like that, it can kind of set up a little bit of funkiness, a little bit instability and uh, just kind of hurt consistency. So what I like to try to do is keep the hips underneath me or what I like to see is people keep the hips underneath them with uh, their shoulders over their hips and then try to kind of stay in the center of the whole thing. Yeah, there's going to be a little bit of shifting left and right and front and back as you counter the hammer, but um, the more you can limit that, usually the more stable the entry will be and the, the wines are more stable and the entry is more stable, then the throw should be more stable and more consistent in general. Um, so try not to lean your shoulders back so much. Try to keep a, your, your shoulders level and, uh, and try not to sway your hips too much side to side. Um, so coming through the entry here. Not too shabby. You're connecting with the hammer pretty early, pretty patient. I like this here. Left side holding steady. You're going to come onto the heel. And see, so this is the hard part with uh, the heel entry. As that heel comes down, which you can see right here, and the ball goes left, this left leg is going to straighten out and kind of push your hips back away from the hammer, which is not ideal in my opinion. Um, on a toe turn, the hips can kind of come back away from the hammer as long as that left shoulder stays out over that left side. But um, in a heel turn, if this right hip shifts away from the hammer as it goes left you're kind of losing tension you're kind of losing force production so what you want to think about is as the hammer goes left and the heel comes down you want to try to keep this left knee out over this left toe try to hold this left hip steady right where it's at right here and what you want to think about is really pushing off this right foot this right knee this right hip you want to chase the hammer out left with your right hip uh, so you want to think about uh, a cue I like is right hip towards hands or like I said just kind of right hip to the high point of the hammer chasing the ball around the left side kind of like uh, almost like a discus and shot turn but not quite. Um, you just don't want this left hip or right hip to shift back from the hammer like I said it's kind of like breaking tension with the hammer a little bit. Um, also kind of going back to what I said about the winds you want your hips more underneath you. Um, like I said, these hips are kind of back and with the hips back, it's not too strong of a position. So like I always say, think about of a, a quarter squat, but think about a quarter front squat versus a quarter back squat. So as you can see, your shoulders are forwards, your hips are back, like if you're doing a quarter back squat. But if you're doing a front squat, your hips would be more underneath you, um, posterior pelvic tilt. So 
the, all, everything kind of goes hand in hand. Like I said, uh, if you have a better posture, if you're a little bit more upright through the torso, you can still want to be down the legs, uh, but more upright through the torso. And then right hip chasing your hands, chasing the ball out left uh, will help. It's hard to do it first, but once you learn it, it's so much more efficient. Um, and then so since you kind of shift this right hip back a little bit, your double support's nice and long, but then your right side's a little bit behind the hammer. It should be with the hammer. Uh, you want to turn with the hammer, not ahead of it or behind it. Right now, like I said, this right foot, right leg is kind of behind everything. So you can see there's not much tension, and you kind of get pulled around a little bit in double support. Because of that, you kind of catch late. Um, you sneak that right foot under pretty good in single support, and you do kind of get that right hip underneath you, which is good. It's a good fix. Um, but then from here, once again, same thing. You're going to want this right hip to drive uh, towards the hands, kind of up into the hammer throw like you're doing a cleaner stance. You want some triple extension. Um, so let's see what happens. Heel comes down again. Left shoulder down a little bit, not a big deal. But for, So from here, you want to think about driving your right hip towards your hands and out around the left hip and towards the sector. Let's see what happens. Pretty good, fine, not bad, not bad. But then you see the hip stays back there. Like I said, your posture is still kind of bent forward, bent over. It's really hard for your hips to get into the throw. It's really hard for you to get um, feel some power from your legs because of this kind of bent over posture. Um, so then the only way to kind of accelerate the hammer is to kind of pull this left shoulder across and push your hands across. You're not really getting your hips into it too much. A little bit better than the first turn. You're not shifting back as much, but it, they're just not getting into the throw like they need to. Um, and the same thing, you kind of come around and get pulled around the left side a little bit because there's no pressure out around the left side. Right foot gets, once again, like I said, kind of coming off like that right leg is kind of behind. You want to think about kind of bringing this right leg, like I said, to driving this right hip and knee into the throw towards the hammer, towards the sector, stepping towards the sector, and then bringing this right leg up and over this left leg instead of bringing it, kind of swinging it around like a narrow discus or shot sweep. Uh, you want to go up and over this left ankle or calf, like a piston up and down over it. Um, so same thing, kind of catching a 270, not much tension here, not a lot of um, time to work and let the hammer accelerate and double support. Uh, you can still see hips are kind of a bit back, shoulders a little bit forwards. Catch, kind of flat-footed here, and then you can see this right foot doesn't really turn until a few frames after you catch. So like when you land on the heel, it's really stable, which is good. That's kind of saving you right now. But as you come through, that right foot starts getting into it. Head starting to get back in the way, count, countering the ball a little bit better. Left heel come down, but then you can still see that left side has the left leg, especially has a tendency to turn ahead of the hammer. And this right leg is behind the hammer. And it's the same thing. Left shoulder is kind of pulling up and back. And then this right hip never really gets into it until like right about there. It was a little bit too late by then. Same thing, that kind of bent over postures killing you. And same thing, kind of lazy right leg and single support. At this point, you want to see this right knee more up and towards the hammer instead of down and away. Like I said, right foot over that left leg. You're nice and deep in this left leg, which is good, but you got to fix that right leg a little bit. Deeper catch here, right hip a little bit more underneath you. Same thing though. Heel catch. Doesn't do anything for a couple frames. But then it does get working just as it needs to. And then you finally get you. So this is where you see this right hip finally extend up into the throw. You get this right hip up into the throw. And you're coming through on the finish. So that same sort of hip motion that you have right here. You want that in each turn. That will be way more efficient, way more powerful. So, lots of little things to work on. Posture, I think, is going to be the biggest thing, Brandon and Aaron. Um, like I said, right from the start, think about getting your hips more underneath you. Keep your shoulders over the hips. 
And um, yeah, quarter front squat position, hips underneath you, like I said. It's the biggest thing. Push your hips as far forward, squeeze your glutes, and then work that right hip up into the throw. And I think that'll do wonders. So things are pretty close. I think if you fix that posture, things will get way easier. It'll be a little funky for a bit because you're going to have to break those bad habits of pulling that left shoulder and pulling that left leg ahead of the hammer to accelerate it. Um, so it'll be a little bit until it feels natural. But once you feel that right hip work up into the throw, like you do in the finish, each turn is going to be so much better. So let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to help. If anybody else out there would like a technical analysis during these crazy times of the quarantine coronavirus madness, then hit me up because I got plenty of time. I'm still doing my best to train, but um, yeah, you know, there's nothing more fitting for social distancing than throwing the hammer. So I don't know. Also, be safe out there. Don't do anything stupid. And I wish everyone the best of health. So thanks for watching, Sean Don. Peace and out until next time.